Hey, I'm Dan from Intelltel. I'm here with Analog Zone at NAMM uh, 2016. I've got a, a few new things I'd like to show you guys. So come on over to the uh, case over here. Um, so first of all, this is a new case. This is our 7U case with a 1U strip and uh, it's 84 HP wide. It's got special retractable legs and um, there's a latching system so that you can attach other things to it like straps, second cases, all sorts of things. And on the back you can see there's MIDI and uh, audio jacks. So in this we've got a few new modules and probably the one that's most interesting to people right now is the Rainmaker. It is, we've been working on this for a couple years and it is uh, in collaboration with Cylonix. Uh, the Jim Clark is the guy that we worked on with on the um, Shapeshifter, which is an amazing complex oscillator. So this thing is a um, first section, it's basically two sections. One is a 16-tap uh, delay. It's actually uh, up to 20 seconds long. It's stereo, everything's 96 kilohertz, 24-bit. And each of these taps is, has its own level control pan, a multi-mode filter that can actually oscillate so that you can you could use this for doing modal synthesis and a granular pitch shifter. Um, there's some global controls for all of these, including a built-in LFO, and uh, you can choose how, where, like where the feedback point is, um, how the grid is spread out, how the t the taps are summed relative to each other, all sorts of things. To gives you a, a lot of capabilities of, of, of for doing interesting delay things. <coughs> and then globally, there is a pitch shift on everything, um, uh, high low tone control, and um, you can apply to the feedback uh, pitch shifting as well like uh, so that you could get rising and decaying um, uh, delay sounds. So this whole section then feeds into, well depending on the routing, the comb filter which is a 64 tap delay. You can go from really really short sounds, uh, short delays to do flanger type sounds, to really long delays and uh, to do really almost like pseudo reverbs and stuff. And each of these has, uh, uh, or in, the, in the, the comb patterns, you can set up how the taps are spread out, uh, how the levels, the filtering and everything. Um, and also the source for the size. So this, if you have this, the feedback high enough and you have a short enough time, you'll get carpless strong type sounds. And we have one volt per octave tracking to be able to play this. And there's actually feedback settings uh, on the filter, filter feedback settings, so you can kind of model different types of sounds like clarinet, sitar, guitar. And so in combination with these two, choosing the routing on how they interact with each other, you get a, a whole universe of sounds. So to augment that, we've added some stuff like this trigger button here uh, is assignable. It can freeze the delay it can, um, it can just see some of the things. You can reverse, you can randomize everything, you can do muting, but you can also do um, shaped and uh, noise bursts so that you can play the carpal strong again, like you can play, trigger this, and then be able to, to do things with it. We have these two assignable mod inputs that could be routed to a bunch of different destinations, like filter cut off of the taps, uh, uh, comb density, you just select them, and then you can control them either with these knobs or uh, external voltage control. So anyways, I don't know, we should probably play some sounds. Yeah. Just put my headphones on. So right now, there's just a simple sine wave coming in from the, um, being sequenced by the Metropolis and coming from the um, Atlantis, and I'll, I'll try some other waveforms too. But as I bring in the wet dry, uh, I'm going to load a preset here. I'll do. So you can hear the cascading delays. Uh, or I'm just going to boost that level a bit. There's a tap tempo, so I can 
make sure the temple's in sync. And if I wanted to, I could just patch a cable from um, my sequencer into the clock input. Change the div settings. And I'll, I'll bring in a different sound here. Okay, so on to the other things. Um, there's obviously a lot more that we could do with this module. Uh, we just can't show in a little bite here and without being able to hear, but it is infinitely deep. So we also have this thing called the boom box. Um, we thought it'd be really fun to have a nice quality speaker that you could put in your Euro rig and then you'd be totally separate from your computer and from any extra speakers or whatever. Just take it somewhere and go and play. Um, but we wanted to make sure it sounded good. So it's got a aluminum foil, um, uh, tweeter inside. It's got a really uh, wide frequency range. There's a bass boost circuit that's specially designed for the enclosure that this is in. So it's a, a, a closed port design. And it's got a 15 watt D-class amplifier that's pretty efficient. So yeah, it sounds pretty good. It's hard to hear over the noise of NAM, so I won't even bother, but um, next to it is the Jelly Squasher. And this is a compressor that we wanted to make sure had uh, imposed a lot of character and coloring of whatever you were compressing. So this is inspired especially by personally my love for uh, techno and more gritty analog sounds. So it's got pretty wide, uh, you can go to a very high ratio, almost like a limiter. Um, let's, I guess we could just go through the basic controls. We've got threshold, ratio, attack and release. Attack can go as fast as 200 milliseconds. Input level, makeup gain, which has, a, again, a lot of gain to, in, in order to match the high amounts of gain reduction you can do. We have this wet-dry uh, knob that allows you to do New York-style compression so that we can have, say, a heavily compressed drum loop and we can make a balance between the compressed and the clean and then you retain some of the bass. Um, up here, you'll see we have a full SVF filter all of this stuff has voltage control, by the way, and so this has low pass, band pass, high pass, so you can turn it off. That allows you to sculpt the, the, the side chain signal, and you can do some really interesting things, especially on complex drum loops, again, that are going through this. And then beside this are uh, some of the specific coloring circuits. So there's already a giant transformer on the back, uh, Ed Corp transformer that was specially selected for its saturation properties. And we also have this analog emulation of tube distortion um, it adds second order harmonics and asymmetrical distortion. There's a tape circuit which is second and third order harmonics and uh, symmetrical distortion. And then this boosts uh, the saturation. It changes some of the feedback properties of the, uh, or the feedback path of the transformer. And so it, it, this is especially effective on frequencies below 100 hertz. So some of these things could be subtle when you have the gain going into them low and then they can be much more extreme when you're, you're really pushing them. So between the input level and the makeup gain and how you're, what you're doing to the rest of the signal, you can really sculpt it into something totally different. So we've been having a lot of fun running a 808 through this, for example, um, which I could patch up really quickly if you wanted. And uh, so we just take this, fast.
It's a weird drum loop right now. Uh, Um, we also have uh, these new extruded cases. These are already in stock and ready to ship, and along with a whole bunch of the 1U modules that are at the top. Um, so malts, uh, attenuverters slash mixers, audio IO, uh, we have MIDI as well. And um, these are built like tanks. They have extruded rubber that fits in the bottom here. This can be removed and put on the other side so that you could stand the cases up like this if you wanted. They fit standard M3 nuts so you could slide nuts in here and then attach other accessories whatever you want. It could be a handle, it could be a stand, it could be a way to link other cases. We have some that we're going to offer as well but we're also going to make the spec public so that people can design whatever they want for them. And um, you've probably already seen earlier in December we had the new module the Polaris which is our new uh, multi-mode filter, again with quite a bit of character, especially with the uh, special distortion circuit, a whole bunch of different filter modes that you can choose from. We have a new version of the Dixie, called the Dixie 2 Plus, uh, which is improves on the original Dixie, but it's also, it also doesn't replace it, it's an alternative. Octave switching, sub out, hard sync that resets to zero, it's really good for fashion stuff. And the standalone version of the, or not the standalone, 3U version of the Micro MIDI. We've got now the 1U and 3U version. Uh, really easy to use, high quality MIDI interface for mono voice control. Um, so availability, uh, this thing is built. We're just doing final uh, beta testing of firmware and, and assembly. So we're gonna be shipping in about three weeks. The price is gonna be about 639. These ones are both the pre-production prototypes. So panels are ready, design is done. We're gonna pull the gun on the order, and so this will be about $140, and it'll be ready in about five to six weeks. Same, and this will be about five to six weeks too, and the price should be about $350. I think that covers everything that I can figure out for now. But uh, so thanks, thanks for having me, Alan Zones. Nice to meet you guys. First time seeing you in person, and uh, I hope your rest of your is good.